far this year? Thoughts on it? Well, I think uh, I think the uh, the second game uh, against Oregon State, um, we played more like we expect to play, which was a lot more effort and a lot more. Uh, uh, you know, we've always we've always prided ourselves here of running to the football and everybody getting to the football. In that game, I think um, the guys did that um, at a more consistent rate. Uh, we still have to get better in our technique. You know, I, I I think they hear that from me every day, and they're going to hear it and until we grade out uh, on technique like we should. Um, we've, we've got to improve that. Fair to say, a light's going on for Chris Wormley. Well, Chris has made some plays. You know, Chris has uh, Chris has done some good things, and and uh, there's a lot more good things to be had. You know, and uh, you know he's got to keep striving to be as good as he can be. He's a very talented football player, and uh, you know you've got great size, uh, great ability to run. Uh, he's strong, uh, and you know I'm looking for him every game to get better. Coach Harbaugh mentioned. Ryan Glasgow was a guy that played well. What did he do well last game? Uh, Ryan, Ryan just goes out there every day and plays with uh, very, very consistent technique, great toughness. And there were a number of plays in that game where he did what we expect our defensive line to do, and that's relentless effort to the football. And made some key key tackles on uh, on plays where the, the the guy was running and, and uh, came from inside out and made some some good hits and, and he's just every day one thing about Ryan every day he has come out and he works hard and tries to improve and uh, been very pleased with him. Greg that first drive against Oregon State what were you thinking what then were you automatically thinking we got to make certain adjustments to, after giving up three big big plays? Yeah I you know there wasn't there wasn't any panic um, you knew you know it was a breakdown here and there that that caused it, and uh, you knew that we were going to make uh, make the adjustments we had to on the sideline. And uh, you know, DJ does a great job with uh, you know making sure he knows knows what's going on in all parts of it. And, and we just got everybody together and uh, said, "This is what's happened. This is what we can't let happen." And uh, and they adjusted to it and they did it. We we it's been very good. Um, the sidelines, you know, after every play, you know, we're all together and. Uh, and DJ will will call the group together and explain exactly what, and then we break down and each position. And I think I think that's been good for both ball games and can even be better. Jim said uh, maybe this week or last week he wants this defense to be more handsy to generate more turnovers. Are, how do you coach that, and are you seeing that more? Well, we you know we we probably coach turnovers more than any defense I've ever been around, and. In the camp and throughout practices, we have we've had more turnovers than I can ever remember, and it's just right now we're just not getting them, and, and we've got to do do a better job of it, better job of stripping it, better job of coming up with the plays. But uh, that is important. We, that's a very important part of our defense, and uh, we'll continue to work at it. And how do you coach it exactly? I mean, well, in practice, you know, and in, in, in you know, in practice, you try to get every turnover you can. If, if a guy's running with it, we don't. It's thud. You don't tackle, but you can still go for the ball. And we've stressed that probably more this year than ever. And uh, you know, and, and I think that there's a lot of a praise in that meeting room for a guy in practice. You show that clip and show how important getting a turnover is, and that's that's been very that's been emphasized a great deal. Coach, you, you have a lot of experienced guys coming back on defense from last year to this year. How much do you think it helped to have you, to you have you in the stay on the coaching staff with all the changes that have been made? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I don't ever think about that. I, you know, I mean, you know, when a new staff comes in, they're not new after about a week, anyhow. You know, so I mean, I think you know the communication part of it. I think the expectations. I think me being with these guys. They know what I think they can do and what they have to do, and so there's not that where you say, "Well, I didn't know he was that good," or he, you know, or he had this to work on. And, and uh, I think that part of it maybe, but um, you know, coaching is coaching, so it, it really doesn't matter. You know, I mean, there's there's coaches come in and you you got a job to do and you do it. For instance, Matt Godin, I think it was the other day. He said that it helped have you around because you were. You were the you were one of the guys who was who was in his house recruiting him and, and all the guys. Do you th think now you've established that continuity that you mentioned? 
Well, I think, I mean, I think that's always it in, in any job. I think in any job when, when um, you know who's working for you, you know, and who's, who's playing for you and who's playing with you, that's always a positive, you know. But, uh, you know, it's still all about coaching technique, playing hard, 